How amazing is that our favorite booktubers have already stated what are their favorite books of the year so far. Because hear me out, if you're able to read those same books and we have similar tastes, are we here for new 5 star reads? Let's see if that is true. And we start with Nettle and Bone, which was the favorite of Elle from the channel Elliot Brooks. She said that this book was fantastic because it was short, it's a standalone, and that it was a story that we might have heard before, but that it was played out in such a fantastic way, and I cannot agree more with her. It has a little bit more than 300 pages, but the book is small, and it will follow a girl who is the third sister to the throne. So she is a princess, but all of her life she has been very inconsequential. She does not feel that she is prepared for the politics. However, this kingdom has always been in a great place reason why her sister has been in this alliance with a neighbor kingdom that it's way more powerful and that will protect them for a potential war. The thing is that her sister is not being treated very fairly by this prince so she will start this quest of what she can do to save her sister without triggering a massive war. And so this book was surprisingly fast paced. It's pretty dark and I'm not at all accustomed to read this type of books. Reason why I'm also very surprised with myself because I really, really loved it. It started in a way that I almost did not understand what was happening. After the first two chapters, things start to make more sense. But the first chapters, I was like, I'm not even sure what I'm reading. It has a lot of forest, dark witches vibe, but it's honestly a blend of also humor because some of the characters are honestly quite hilarious and the group that is created throughout this story, it's almost cute, almost uplifting. In terms of tropes, there's gonna be a quest. It has a little bit of romance as well in it, but it's not really the point of the story. Family found vibe as well. The magic system in this world, it's somewhat would bake. I'd say it's a soft magic system. We will have different witches here. Our main character has a little bit of a special thing herself, which also triggers a very interesting element. Character-wise, we will be following mainly one of them, our girl Mara, this third sister, and we see how she is very naive. I found myself really wanted to keep going, and once the story ended, although it was a little bit predictable, I was really, really, really satisfied. And we can continue with Finley Donovan, It's Killing It, the only book in this list that it's not fantasy and this was the favorite of Lexi from Alexandra Rochlin's booktube. She loved it because it's mainly a comedy with a hint of mystery made her smile and this book talks about our girl Finley who has been recently divorced and she is just hanging in there really. She needs to take care of her children, she is writing a book, she does not have money to pay the bill and you know things are happening to her her life does not seem fair at all in one day she is in this restaurant crafting and throwing ideas with her editor and one person that was near them in this restaurant completely misreads the situation and asks Finley to kill her husband so in terms of characters they were all right liked Finley I thought she was such a chaotic person which I really resonated with. We had this other person, almost this robbing to her Batman, and she was for me the favorite. I like how carefree she was and also how weedy. In terms of the writing style and overall the story, I thought it was pretty slow even. Different stuff happened but when you start the story it seems that something is going to be like the main point and then you keep reading and that point almost gets forgotten and it turns to another. In terms of the writing style it's definitely light. Yes it has murder, it has different mystery elements, detectives, but at the same time you see how this is mainly a comedy and how it is crafted. So we have our main character kind of like living through the situations and you know just having it tough and overall I'm not sure this is kind of like a book for me. It was a fine read for summer. I need to give it to this book that it's very addictive. It was really engaging but the story it was a little bit unbelievable, very unbelievable for me and that was kind of like what was stopping me to fully enjoy this book. The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson is the favorite book so far of Captured Words and Beowulf. This might be a new favorite of mine as well. Well, he said that it's a very short novella, but in the amount of time that we spend, the character 
character development, it's incredible. In a nutshell, we kick off the story with our main girl, Shay, being in jail. She has been taken because she is a forger, which means that she is able to recreate stuff and she is also able to persuade elements to be different to what they are, to come to another state. And this is kind of like a very forbidden, almost religion inside this world, which is shared with Elandris, so Cell. She is about to be executed, but an opportunity arises because the Emperor has been very gravely injured and he does not have any mind, any emotions, no soul. So Shay will be able to use her magic, this forging in order to just recreate the soul of the emperor once again. There are two types of magics that are going to be shared in this book. The first one, it's kind of like this forging, which happens by creating different seals that then you can place into the different objects. And then the second one, we will also see a little bit of blood magic. This book was fantastic for so many reasons. The characterization was fantastic. Like there are two main characters Characters within this story and how we get to know them in such a small time it's outstanding it really creates a mark and also I think it was really beyond to what the story it's about it allows us to think a little bit deeper on what is a soul what is a person and also it reminded me of two things that I really like the first one, I really saw a lot of Shalan, one of the main characters in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson from Shay. So I really think that Shay was kind of like the inception that then later on was explored with Shalan with the different personalities. And then also, I'm not sure if this is true, but for me, it was kind of like also similar to the magic system that happens in Foundry site by Robert Jackson Bennett. They can inscribe objects and then persuade these objects to behave in a certain way. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. I cannot recommend enough. And now we get to Middle Game, the favorite of Jess Owens. This was her favorite because she said that the characters were outstanding. The plot was interesting, but although she read it at the beginning of the year, she still found herself thinking about these characters, Roger and Dodger. Middle game, it's definitely a darker sci-fi fantasy story to one I'm used to. The premise really, really, really interested me. I thought this was gonna be one of my favorites so far and well, not so much. The book starts with this alchemist that is creating different creatures, people, because he wants to get into the impossible city. And it seems that in order to do so, he will need to change the scales of the cosmos and create these creatures that are going to be kind of like a singularity. And the story will follow two siblings that are linked through quantum entanglement. They can mind talk. One of them is really gifted with the numbers and the other one really gifted with words. However, overall, I felt that the plot was kind of like unsatisfying in a way. It's this type of book that you just need to have complete focus because there's so many different stuff. You start to change a little bit timelines but beyond that I just end this book and I'm with the feeling that I have not understood this completely. There are so many things that I feel are left unanswered and although I believe a lot of this has been done intentionally like brain food, for me it's like no I'm hungry, I'm not understanding. In terms of tropes, we'll have mainly a coming to age kind of vibe. There's also going to be this amazing bond between these two siblings. And there's a little bit of like the good versus the evil. The evil are very evil. I do need to give this book though, and also to Jess Owens, that the characters are the best from this book. So Roger and Dodger, who are the siblings, are really well crafted, in my opinion. We will follow them since they are children, and we see how the girl, the math prodigy, she is a little bit of a introvert, and she's not really well adjusted. Meanwhile, he is a prodigy with words. It's really charismatic. They really feel like people, you know, like they're flawed. But overall, the plot, Mm. The writing style for me was also a little bit weird, like sometimes it was confusing for me to understand who was the narrator. In the same page we had one paragraph, the brother talking, and then in the other one it was the sister, and then another, there was this third character. The timelines and the different moments also blended, and so I think that I'm not really that smart to really pick up the complete energy of this book. Also the magic 
well, the alchemy and the powers that this character has is explored, but really, really, really superficially. And I wanted to know a little bit more about that. And we then go to Guns of the Dawn, the favorite of Jessie May. She pitched it as being the perfect combination of a Jane Austen character in a military setting and that she loved it all the way through. And oh my God, Guns of the Dawn. This is a new favorite for me, definitely a new favorite. In terms of the plot, we have this society where the neighbor kingdom is starting to rage war against them. And you know, it seems that it has a starting to conquer different realms and people is started to get drafted to war and the story begins with all the different men going to this war and little by little also women are also called and we will be following our main character Emily who is also drafted to war. This story had so many perfect things for me it is just unreal. So the whole story is told under the point of view of Emily and we will see her really growing up how she will need to face first this very Jane Austen society and then later on how she faces war and how you know she will need to change completely and she will start to question who is the good who is the bad in this war and the only element that will keep her kind of like linked to this reality are these letters that she is corresponding with this man and so there's a little bit of a I hate everyone except you trope. There's also going to be a lot of family found and also a little bit of a chosen one, but not in the classic concept of magic being all around the world, but you know, just she being the girl that needs to get stuff done and she will do it. She will be very brave and she will do a lot of stuff. I really thought that the writing style was phenomenal. I reckon if you are really, really an action chunky, this might be a tad slow for you. The first part of the book was a little bit slow for a lot of people because the first lines, the first chapter talks about kind of like the present point. And then after that chapter, we will kick off the story like three years before that moment. And so there's that getting to know the characters and how they get there that I personally loved. And that's the most Jane Austen part with our character being in this different world and she understanding a little bit more about the war. For a lot of people, this part was like meh, a little bit boring. I loved it. But eventually we will pick up where the story was left and you know, like we will keep advancing. It's mainly her moving throughout this war. And I I honestly never expected to like this as much as I did. I am now understanding that I am completely obsessed with the flintlock subgenre of fantasy, which who knew this is the subgenre where there's a little bit modern, we are getting away from the medieval setting and we are starting to have these different democracies as well as this specific type of guns, right? There's a little bit of gun power, but they are not really advanced. So I loved Promise of Blood and this is kind of like in the same subgenre. So I am completely obsessed. While I was reading it, I wanted to get into the book. I couldn't find ex enough excuses to get into reading it again. It's a standalone and it was fantastic. I loved as well how the book wrapped it up. The ending was also very satisfying. If I were to say something though, it really isn't a fantasy book as much. Like yeah, you have a warlock here and there, but it's really low fantasy. So if you were also planning to get into fantasy, I believe this is an amazing book as well. Almost historical fiction. Really, really loved it. Five stars. Obsessed. Let's do now a little bit of a wrap up and let's run to the different books. I think in the fifth position, we are going to have Finley Donovan, It's Killing It. And don't get me wrong, this was fun, it was fast, it was mystery, a thriller, and it was everything that I needed when I read it. But honestly, it is a little bit forgettable. Then in the fourth position, and I feel so not cool for saying this, we have Middle Game. This is a great book, but wasn't a favorite of mine because it kept me a little bit unsatisfied. It definitely has very thrilling topics around alchemy and about physics, but overall the amount of gaps that I have still in my head make it impossible for me to make it a five-star read. In the third position, we will have Nettle and Bone, which was so great. This is dark, really short. I thought the characterization was fantastic. It was phenomenal, a little bit more dark than what I'm used to and loved it. In the number two, we will have The Emperor's Soul, which incredible how Brandon Sanderson is able to do so much with just a little bit more than 100 pages. And honestly, magic, check. The plot, incredible. 
loved it. And as I'm sure you were guessed, as of now, my favorite of the list is Guns of the Dawn. Really, really, really recommend for everyone. If you're like, yay, I want something that is war related, then this is for you. But also if you are, hmm, I want to get into fantasy and I'm not sure how, this is also for you. If you like Jane Austen, I think, give it a try. It was such an incredible read. And that was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see me reading other booktubers favorites, let me know down below in the comments and I will for sure do. And also if you want to see other standalones that were fantastic, I will link in the description a video where I compiled 16 standalone recommendations and I hope to see you soon. Bye.